about this time. I surely will be in a better place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. In the context of the blood of Jesus, sin loses its status. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is no longer the wages of sin is death. It is powerless. It loses its status. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> I don't know whether you're ready for that. You should be because that's the truth. Hallelujah. Everything loses its status. Everything that prior to the context of the blood in your life. Hallelujah. That had its power and influence and consequences over you. In the context of the blood. Hallelujah. Everything becomes irrelevant. Its status, you see, you will see it there. But its status has just been changed. Hallelujah. 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 Outside of the blood of Jesus, sin is a very powerful thing. It holds mankind in bondage to its consequences, its wages. Hallelujah. In the context of the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, you've got to be a believer. And a believer does not believe the obvious. A believer believes the revelation of God. Hallelujah. Those that struggle to believe the revelation of God are unbelievers. You are a believer. In the face of everything dark, you know that the power thereof has been dismantled. There's nothing that has power over you. Glory to God. Under the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You see, you need to understand this. You need to know who you are. You need to operate on a level that is higher than the ordinary you. You need to understand the revelation of God that will take you to levels that are higher than you have even imagined before. Hallelujah. The whole world, the whole creation is longing for the manifestation of you. There's a certain you that is about to appear, to manifest. Hallelujah. You are that work in progress. You are that work, the work of the revelation of God in progress. And you are showing up from glory to glory to glory. There's a level of you that is about to show up and life will know that now you can no longer be ignored. Creation will know that now you can no longer be ignored as a son of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, the whole earth, it says the foundations of the, of, of, of the whole earth, it says, are out of course. The foundations of the whole earth. Psalm 32 verse 5. Hallelujah. It says, All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Hallelujah. All the foundations, it says, of the earth are out of course. In other words, things are not the way they are supposed to be. There are things that are working in reverse from the way they ought to be. 
Everything in life, everything about creation is supposed to complement you. You ought not to have any single antagonistic factor when you're walking through this earth. Everything was meant in life, in this life. It was meant to complement you, not to work against you. All creation, even the weather itself. Have you ever woken up and you have a plan and it rains heavily and you cannot move? It says, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. There are things that are working opposite from the way they ought to work. When you see something working against you, it wasn't meant or it's not meant to be like that. It's because the foundations of the earth are out of course. Everything, everything is put there in life to complement you, to support you, to serve you. There ought not to be anything in this life, anything, any single thing in this life that works against you. Even the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone that you meet has got to play a positive role in building up your destiny. That is how creation was intended and is intended to be for you. So when something is out of course, you normally hear people say, but why do bad things happen to good people? It's because all the foundations of the earth are out of course. There is no way you a prayer warrior. You wake up and things are going haywire. It's like you're in a war every day. Whatever you try to do, it's like things now wake up and rebel everything. The weather first rebels. Everyone around you starts repairing. Even your dogs and cats, all of them now, you know. <laughs> everything. Knock something. Everything is going, it's like everything is out of course. It's not supporting you. It's not complimenting you. That's the thing the Spirit of God is correcting. Hallelujah. You see, I don't know about you. I don't know about you. I observe my life. Your life is the biggest assignment that you have. You see, people, some people think, oh, you know, I'm, now, I'm not busy. I'm, I'm, there's a lot going on that you need to study about your life. In the reflection of the glory and the revelation of God, you study and see how it is matching up. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. So you observe it and see how many things, how many of those things are seemingly still out of course. Hallelujah. It says, all the foundations. You think God created the world for it to be a mysterious rebel? Against his creation? Against his sons and daughters, his children? Everything was meant to perfectly fit and suit your existence. Everything. But now something happens. And all the foundations of the earth are now out of course. We begin to see things astray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no wonder, hallelujah, they know not. Neither will they understand. It says, they walk on in darkness. And the result, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Why? They know not. <laughs> Neither will they understand. It says, they walk on in darkness. There are things that you get to know and understand.
understand and walk in the light, in the revelation of God. And everything starts to come in course, in tune with you. You see, that is the mystery of life. That is the mystery of life. There, it is sorted, it is solved. You see it there. So what don't they know? He says, I have said ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. Says they, but they don't know. They walk on in darkness. He says, neither will they understand. He says, all the foundations therefore are out of course. He says, I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. He says, but ye shall die as mere men. He says, but you shall die like men. He says, you shall suffer the fate of men. He says, there are things that ought not to happen to you. The things that happen to men ought not to happen to you. You're not like men. You are created in the image and likeness of man, of God. He says, but they shall die like men. says, they shall die like men. Hallelujah. Again, there are things that ought not to happen to you. You know the normal things, the common things that happen to the average men, the things that are known to happen to man. As nature, quote unquote, takes its course, that nature ought not to take its course on you. But you see, when you have those phrases, eh? nature has taken its course. You've just placed yourself on the level of men. Eh? So he says you shall die like men. Hallelujah. There's a course of things. There's, there's a course that things shape up and take. It ought not to be the same with you once again. It ought not to be the same. Just because it has been known that these things here, a list of some of these things happen to men, does not mean that you should be numbered or you should number yourself among men for those things to happen to you as well. For you it is different. So just because men grow old and age does not mean that you should grow old and age. Yeah. Hallelujah. Are you people ready? Hallelujah. There's something I had said I would never, I would not share with you guys until someone takes note. Eh? And then this weekend, someone took note of something that happened to me. They said, let me share with you. Eh? You see, it is something small, small. Eh? I take account of everything in my life and I make sure that I step everything up to the level of glory, eh? beyond the level of man. Everything I have to see, the level of glory in it, every aspect of my life. So, <laughs> so this weekend, someone told me, <coughs> someone came smiling. I told me, <coughs> ah, ah, no, no, no. Papa, you just, you have to tell me. 
what trick did you apply on your hair? <laughs> now, I don't know whether some of you noticed that the course of men had come and I was losing. And then there are things I don't really care about. But for the sake of revelation, I said, okay, now. Hallelujah. Now, first, first be there. So, you know, there are things which are trivial to some. Some are not trivial to others. Some are, you know, that was trivial to me. But I like, I don't like taking the course of men. You know where, there's a certain DJ who said, eh? certain DJ of the 90s who said, Najang eh? you see? In other words, I came like a golden and I'm not going back. So I remember that statement. I said, no, 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 this is not. Hallelujah! So when I traveled, that was a part of my assignment. Eh? And I went, I looked in the mirror. And I applied my magic. Hallelujah. By the next day, this front had gone. Eh? Now, some of you look at me in the spirit. You don't even notice any physical changes with me. Eh? But some of you, I know you noticed it. Eh? So, I went and looked. And when I looked, I covered everything. Now, this one, it is not for me, it is for you. Because everything, there are things which I do when I'm also part of the beneficiary. But I wanted, I don't want to leave anything untouched where I cannot tell you that also this one is possible. So, after I covered it, I will not tell you how I did it because for you it will be different. You know, I can, I can do, I'm going to do it now for those of you who... Hallelujah. I do not play games. I don't come here to, oh, you know, fellowship. Let the others, I don't do that. So anyway, it was one single move. Looked right in. And I saw something different the other side. The image was different. And I declared from within. Eh? I said, Lord, this is different. Not because of me. I said, and when it does, it can go as well. But for this people's sake, from the next day to the next day to the next day to the next day, I saw it increase. And then... <laughs> I knew. I said, because there are certain things that I do, just, and then I just want you people to observe and take on something. There's a time, there's a time I decided not to cut my fingernails for three months. And I cut them and I said, they will not grow. Because they don't, they don't ought not to just grow anyhow and then come back and then grow and then come back. And then I said, no. Now that one, I don't know whether anyone observed it. But I've done very small, small things here and there. To show you, first of all, to show you myself, because I never want to stand before you and there's something lingering that I've never applied myself. But to show you that there's nothing, there's nothing that is outside of our control. I'm telling you, nothing whatsoever. It ought, I'm telling you, nature ought not to take its course. It says, they know not, nor do they understand 
they walk on in darkness. And he says, all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Things happen. Things happen. Things happen and people just, you don't know, okay, now, I think this is the age where this should, who told you that? Who told you that? Who told you that? That things just ought to happen because somehow you have clocked 40. Who told you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am here to make sure of what God called me to do. Eh? I want us to get in a certain place where people look here. And when they say, but what is happening to those people? They seem to be reversing. What is, what is happening? I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so, it depends what you want, what you do not want, what is light to you, what is not. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I have said ye are God's. And all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall die like men. These things shall just happen to you like men. Did you know? Genesis 1.26, you were created in the image and likeness of God. In the image and likeness of God. Now that what image means. You are a revelation of God. You are a revealer of God. Image is synonymous with revelation. Likeness, on the other hand, is just as it is. It's not enough to be like God. There are people who are like God, but don't reveal God. Have you met unbelievers who are nice and kind? Oh, he's nice. That guy is really nice. But they don't reveal God. You can't look at them and see God. They're just nice men. And God is nice. But the revelation of God is supernatural. It is spirit. Hallelujah. We came to reveal God. Hallelujah. Where people look and see him. You know, it's one thing to see nice men and nice women. But it's another thing to see God men. Hallelujah. Where when they see, they know they, that is like God now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's our assignment. Whatever we do, whatever we do, whatever we plan, whatever we are all about is to reveal Him. We have to see and see a portion of him, an aspect of his glory. They see and they see and they see. We're not here to be nice moral men. Eh? And the whole church can take part in this debate about morality and niceness and societal responsibilities and hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are here. To reveal him. We are here to reveal him. When they see, they see God. They may not like him, 
but they will see him. They will acknowledge that there's something there. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. So wherever you are, there's a disclosure of God that awaits. Hallelujah. A disclosure of God. So now, wherever he has placed you, that assignment is in the making. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. Now you see how that place is? Out of course. And things apparently not working for you. Now let me tell you. When this disclosure of God begins to happen. There is no office. There is no school. There is no business arrangement. There is nothing that will not respond and take its course back to you. Some of you go to your offices and it's like you've gone to rebel territory. Eh? <laughs> you ought to wake up, plan a business trip to Dubai, reach there, and you're anticipating everything to be in unison, in tune with why you have gone there. Hallelujah. 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 They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth it says are out of course. So now you see that everything ought to respond to you. It ought to respond to you. So now you see the importance of the revelation of God, of the image of God about you to show up. You will see a certain God aspect. Hallelujah. Made in the uniqueness of you and placed in such a place and for such a time as this for him to show up there and they see him as they see you they see him as they see you. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, creation responds to God. Creation responds to its creator. So it's that image, not the image of man. Don't go there and complain and fight the battles of men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. Romans chapter 1 verse 20. It says, For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. It says, The invisible things of God from the creation of the world it says, are clearly, clearly seen. So now we see, we're talking about the image of God, the revelation of God being made manifest. So, and uh, you will note that the revelation of God is on different levels. Eh? There's one that the scripture says can be seen or revealed through the things that are made. But now you see, he says they are, it's actually the invisible things in, are actually clearly seen. He says God is visible from the things that are made. The things that are made make God visible. Make the invisible things of God visible. But now you see, people look around and people walk around. And some remain unbelievers, some remain atheists. And yet, actually the things, he says, which are invisible of him are clearly seen. You ought to look at the whole world and be in awe at the presence and power 
and majesty of God. But you know where the problem is? The problem is not in the revelation and manifestation of him through creation. The problem is with the receiver. Something is wrong with the receiver. There is blindness. He says there is blindness. You see, <laughs> when I go to places, there are places I like going to, and I sit by myself, let's say, on a sea or on an ocean by the beach, and I'm looking in the vast expanse of these mighty, majestic waters. What I see is different from what others see who are there. For them, they're just feeling the breeze and moving around. Now for me, I'm there and everything, my God, I'm seeing things that I can't explain. I'm seeing glory, I'm seeing power, I'm seeing majesty, and I get so full when I'm just seated still there. Then other people are just, you know, diving in and skiing and, you know, And I see these things everywhere. I see the invisible things of him. And I connect and I see. No wonder you remember the angels, the seraphim, on the throne of God, they said, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. He says, the whole earth is filled with his glory. And then people look around the earth and they don't see any bit of his glory. And they start praying, Lord, when will you pour down your glory? In church. Praying for revival. In church, praying for God to show up. In church, he's in creation already. But the people in church have not yet seen him. They are praying and fasting. Fasting and praying for revival for God to show up. And yet, you can be that open, that open, that everywhere you are moving, everywhere, all your interactions, you know, you can be talking to people, talking to people, talking to someone, and that person is talking nonsense, by the way. And then, one slight word comes out and the Lord speaks. And eh, you know, Because you know him. And there he is. And then things happen. And then he comes. He's every moment, every mo he's there everywhere. But the receiver is the problem. The person is the issue. They are blinded. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly, he says, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. He says, even his eternal power. And Godhead it says, so that they are without excuse. Verse 21. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Say those little things. A prophetic word comes through and manifests. <laughs> And you do not see God. Do you know right now, everywhere, on those channels, everywhere, even among remnants, there are people talking and trying to analyze what is happening in Israel. And God told you in January the context of it all. But who are you? To go back there. Formulate your own things and you know, talk, talk, talk. And so, he comes in. He says, because when they knew God, he says, they glorified him not as God. You know, it's easy to analyze after an event. That's what you see on CNN, you see on all this, you know. They didn't prophesy in the beginning in January. We were talking about Ukraine. While they were talking about Ukraine, we prophesied Israel. And in context to Iran, and notice that every talk about Israel is now about, the context is Iran. 
That was the prophecy. Very clear. Now they come, experts. And they are off, off, off. And now you find people, even here, who listen, joining into the bandwagon. And it is because when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. You know, when he comes through that angle, only that bit, do you know the power and presence of that revelation, what it can do to you if you magnified it as God? And you wonder why we are so far removed from revealing his image. Because everything about him shows up and then we are there flowing like men. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, it says, but became vain in their imaginations. It says, and their foolish heart was darkened. This is the regression. It says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and to birds. And to, in other words, they reduced everything about God to analysis. Don't fall into that trap. There's something awakening about a prophetic revelation. If you tune in onto it and receive it as indeed it is a prophetic revelation, and don't let the world, the clamor and clatter of the world sway you, something will explode from within you, a light will explode, you will begin to awaken to higher things. You will begin to be sensitive to his image, to his revelation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 1 verse 25. It says, Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God. It says there's such a thing as the dispensation of God. Where it is all about God. Not the dispensation of man. God. Not the dispensation of the law. God. Where God has come, everything is about him. All the workings that you see are about the revealing or disclosure of God. Hallelujah. Not the dispensation of the law, the dispensation. You know, this can be synonymous with the dispensation of grace. But the ultimate truth of it, it is God. And that is what he is looking for. And that's what creation is looking for. And that's where we are. In the dispensation of God. Where the image of God is all that everything is all about. Concerning you. In other words, how much of God are you revealing? The only thing that matters is the dispensation of God. What measures where you are. Your accountability. In as far as how far you've progressed, it is how much of God. Hallelujah. It says, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God. It says, this dispensation of God which is given to me for you. Hallelujah. Which is given to me for you. Everything given to me, it is for you. Everything God-like. Hallelujah. And you see, if you just observed me as a spectator, and not as one who is a, a partaker or a participator, then you'll miss out on the bigger picture. 
Because everything about me, everything of God about me is for you. This is given to me for you. There are the people who see and admire, and that's it. And there are people who know that all he and that one, he, he's, he experienced that. That means it is for me also. Paul knew it. Every man and woman of God who has received a direct call, who has a special call for a generation. I'm not talking about... Okay, let me move on from there. I'm saying, <laughs> you know it, that this is how you are meant to affect the people. That everything, and that is why you will go, you will go by yourself. That's why I'm sharing with some of the things I did, that's something that happened to me privately. For you. For you, not for me. For you. Let me tell you, today, this day, Many of you are going 10 years younger, 10 years younger, 10 years younger, 10 years younger. And if you're 10 years, so don't, don't rejoice. Eh? You may go back to zero. Eh? <laughs> Hallelujah. You've received that. Yeah. Now you watch eh? and see what happened to your systems. See what happens to your systems. The miracle has started now, now, now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Just look at yourself. Just watch yourself and see. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, wherever I made a minister... According to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you. It says, to fulfill the word of God. Verse 26. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations. It says, but now is made manifest to his saints. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, there are things which have been hidden. There are great men of God who went through things that we ought not to go through. And I only say that because I stopped because there are those who are looking down on me. Eh? And I don't want to get there and he says, okay, now why did you say that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, it says, but now is made manifest to his sins. Certain people accepted and tolerated certain things until we showed up. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are things that by revelation, you see revelation, here we're talking about now not just the general revelation of God in creation. We're talking about the progressive revelation of God, which comes when another revelation has been added to another. And all of a sudden, some of the things that were accommodated as faith and all these other things, all of a sudden, the ultimate revelation comes. And you begin to see, hallelujah, much more clearer. Because that's what revelation is all about. It causes you to see much more clearer. It says, but there are mysteries which are hidden for generations. You wonder, but why would so and so, why would they accept certain things? Because certain things were hidden from them. And this has happened throughout the generations as revelation increases and increases and increases. And many times through history, when it has increased and progressed, the people of the previous generation 
fight the one, the, the new one. So that's now not of God, that is cult. And then it increases, it increases. Now, never, never give God a reason to retire you. You know how you can give God reason to retire you? You stop somewhere and station and say, I have known all that there is about you. Nothing more will ever, it's just now this. This is my religion. You'll be retired the next day. And then you'll start fighting the one who has occupied your place. Hallelujah. It says, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, it says, but now is made manifest to his sense. To his sense. It says, but now is made Now, 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 now. I'm looking at you, his sense. Now, the thing is, how much of this are we going to take in? Because this works in everything, everything from your pockets to your manipulating your accounts, manipulating everything that seemed to have taken a different course from what you wanted, what you desired. Hallelujah. It says, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches and the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Hallelujah. He says this mystery, God wants to make it known among the Gentiles. And it is you he's looking at. Hallelujah. So we have approached the days of the great disclosure. Yeah. Hallelujah. He says, <laughs> he's looking at you. Then he's looking at the Gentiles. And then he's, he, he says, there's something that was hidden. That has been hidden. Where people think, the Gentiles think, the Gentiles are every other person that does not know Christ. He says they think in a certain way. They think the United Nations is the main body. They think the World Health Organization is the main authority in health. They think all these things. And then he says, they have an academic system that is predetermined, that is set, he says, but then, there's something that is hidden from them that he wants to make known to them. He says, and you carry it. And it will start to defy all the body of knowledge that they have. Then they will begin to look and say, eh. so what we learned that man has to go through, so there's something more is you. So now, if it is you that is looking at, why would you allow yourself to fear that you're going to succumb to some of, oh, what? Well, you, whom God is looking at, you're in fear. It is time you wake up, take a different course. Wake up and take a different course! I'm telling you. You've lived in fear for a very long time. Because you did not know that you are the very image of God. You are the one God is looking at to manifest something about. He's counting on you. So where would you be thinking? Okay, now let me plan my life because I know with these attacks that I'm... Which attacks? You are a defiant to anything on this scale of life. I'm telling you. Those things won't take their normal course on you. 
A miracle is in the orphan. I'm telling you, you're there to defy what the doctors have said. You're there to defy what everyone and everything else is trying to say to you. You just see everything being covered. It says, death shall be covered up. Mortality shall be consumed or covered up in immortality. What is more powerful, mortality or immortality? I'm telling you. It shall be swallowed up. Swallowed up. Everything dark that you have been fearing. Swallowed up by immortality. I'm telling you. Now, it's time for you to live a life that is awake. Awake. Don't live this life thinking and fearing and on that level, on those vibrations. There you succumb and you'll find yourself in heaven very soon. Eh? <laughs> it says, To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Which is Christ in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ in you. It is the hope of glory. The hope of a higher state of existence. You know this different states, different levels of existence. You can exist as a man, like a man. Where your vibrations, your energy, your life form succumbs to nature because it's a part of nature. And then there's a higher form, a higher state of existence where everything now is heavenly. Who attunes you there? Christ in you. The hope of glory. Christ in you. There's something. You know, the same spirit who rose Christ from the dead. If that same spirit dwells in you, the scripture says, he shall give life. He shall quicken your mortal body. Says, there's a certain generation. There's a generation of higher vibes. Where your body, your soul, ceases to be ordinary. It takes upon another form, another level, a higher state. Now that's where, that's the place where you get to. And you say, for other men, nature takes its course. But for you, you shall not get a bald head. Let me finish from there. Happening now at Zoe Grounds every Tuesday, 5.30 p.m. at Plot 47, Chigolweza, Kampala, Uganda, along the Entebbe Express Highway. For those flying in, contact our public relations desk by emailing pr at prophetelvis.com.